Hey, what's going on? It's John, and it's time for the Jmart cast for Monday, February 7th. How you doing, friends and family? Thank you for joining me on another episode. I'm actually recording on a Saturday because I have some free time, and I thought I'd get this out of the way and get it going. Hope you all had a good week. Mine was pretty good, even though it was a little bit different because I'm not staying at home this week. I am out of my house because we're getting our floors refinished, and so it took a couple days for them to get the floors uh, re-sanded and re, um, I guess, stained. And then we had to be out of there for a few days for the stain to really sink in and not smell too badly in the house. So then luckily we had the opportunity to, to stay at my parents' place. So that was good. And now, uh, probably later tonight, we'll be going back to my place. So Pretty excited to go back, even though um, didn't feel all that horrible to be out of the house for, for a week. Got to spend a lot of time with the wife and the kids, which is always <laughs> awesome. My kid's getting pretty uh, pretty funny. He's like so getting so smart that like my um, boy, older boy, he's so smart that he's using like reverse psychology on me. <laughs> this kid's like, uh, the other day, he's like, uh, we're out of grapes, I think. And like... He's using negative psychology or like uh, reverse psychology to, to for me to be totally like, oh no, we've got we've got grapes. You want some? Like I totally fell for that. I wasn't even conscious, and then all, all of a sudden I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> too smart, too smart. Uh, what else is good? Uh, I'm experiencing a couple of little injuries. Uh, my right shoulder it really hurts when I rotated internally um internally would be like if you have your let's say your elbow up as high as your shoulder and you rotate your shoulder such that the fist rotates down points down towards the ground uh, like that motion itself is not bad but then if i bring my like arm behind me and kind of try to reach my thumb up towards my back that's when it (laughs) <laughs> doesn't feel great. So I've been doing a lot of uh, rotations and basically trying to do some version of that that I can still manage to do without pain. And it's been getting a lot better. And then I also messed up my left knee. Not exactly sure how, but I have a feeling both of these are jujitsu injuries. So I clearly need to take it easy, which I have been actually since this week. I did not, wasn't at home. I haven't been going to jujitsu this week, which has been good for my healing process. There was a while there where my left knee, like it was completely fine when I walked and did regular things. But uh, if I was going to do an exercise that put a lot of weight on the knee, um, it was it was it was really painful where I couldn't actually perform the exercise. It's funny, though, like certain exercises only like I was doing these things called sissy squats. And a sissy squat is basically where you're bending your knees well past your toes as your heels go up and you don't really flex the hips. And you lower down till your knees touch the ground in front of your toes, basically. And so that's a lot of weight on the knee. And it was like, that's what was painful and I couldn't uh, perform. But all other knee exercises, I was actually doing pretty fine with. So I was just doing what I could. And I would do low uh, range of motion, partial range of motion, uh, CC squats where I would only bring the knees down as far as I, until I could feel the pain and then I'd just go slightly above that and not do anything else and just wait, like wait and hold that position like five to 10 seconds and come back up and just do that for multiple reps. And over the days I could go, get a little lower, a little lower. And now finally I'm able, actually able to get all the way down. So. I'm sure I'm not fully healed or, uh, or anything like that, but I'm definitely healed up enough to be able to do that exercise now without feeling a whole bunch of pain, which is awesome. Just got me thinking about how, like, so it's so good that I know all these things for rehabbing my body, and but even with the knowledge that I have to do this, all this for myself, I'm still finding it a little difficult to keep up with a constant... Uh, uh, I don't know, a schedule of doing these rehab exercises to make sure I'm getting better. Like I'm, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm still like, obviously the results are definitely uh, showing that I, I'm, my injuries are getting better, but I could imagine how somebody with less motivation, less knowledge, less access to information would face the same situation and something they could totally, you know, manage 
if they had the right support, could turn out to be like a really, I don't know, difficult obstacle in their life where they can't actually, uh, you know, overcome it in a speedy, efficient manner. And then it leads to other issues down the line could snowball. So made me think about that and just be feel feel very grateful about the, the position I'm in, you know, to be knowledgeable enough to be able to take care of my body uh, in a way that I can, you know, do what's best for it to allow it to basically heal itself. Yeah, I don't know. It's good. It's a deep thought, right? Like um, my most recent, actually, I didn't pop this recently, but I did uh, on this podcast, but I did have a new episode of on state of health uh, with my buddy, Daniel yours. And we talked about what is health and what is health sovereignty. And it was it was a it was a good podcast episode. I think we touched on a bunch of things that I really wanted to talk about, and some other ones on top of that as well, which is always a, a great. And I highly recommend uh, listening to that and kind of hearing for some of the actionable things that could be done to basically basically take responsibility for your health. Right, like the whole premise of that episode was to talk about how like being healthy and having a healthy body is is your right. But if you have the right to your healthy body, you also have the responsibility of maintaining that health, right? Doing everything you can in your power to maintain that health for as long as possible. So we tried to, we tried to break down what health is into different components and what are the certain responsibilities that fit, fit into each component that you could take, uh, you know, take on. Maybe not all at once, you know, not, not uh, you know, you don't have to move mountains in days, right? You just just consistently with slow uh, and small uh, behavioral changes over time, it's possible. Many people have done it and it's not, you know, it's not mysterious how it's done. It's, it's been laid out. If anyone's on the journey of getting healthy, getting fit, losing weight, getting stronger, who wants to get more like muscle or strength, all that, if, you, if you're on the path and you Feel like you don't know what to do or you're confused you can always reach out right reach out to me or to other experts somebody who you trust who you think will provide you with good information reach out and like you know there's a lot of information out there and you can't trust all of it so you need to like find the people in your circle in your network uh, who have a little bit of experience and uh, expertise and lean on those people so I'm here if any of y'all need any help with uh, your health and fitness goals, reach out. If you got my number, just text me, call me. If you haven't got that, then reach out through social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, at jmartfit. Uh, on uh, Telegram as well, at jmartfit. On Facebook, jmartmoves. Uh, you can rent, uh, write me an email newsletter at jmartfit.com let's have a conversation about health that's the most important thing you know i said this in the in that podcast that i was just describing a healthy man has a thousand desires but a sick man has a single desire right it concentrates and focuses your mind on the most important thing when you're sick right we discovered that through this pandemic <laughs> in a way, right? Some people didn't really <laughs> find their health. They just got, some people lost, uh, some people, lo lots of people made a huge difference, right? And got really healthy, but then a large majority of people actually got worse, got way worse. Why did that happen? Maybe because of the messaging, right? Because did, did you know that health comes in the form of a shot? Did you know that? <laughs> Did you know that, or, or it could be possibly a pill. You never know. It could be a shot or a pill, Wh whatever you like. I, I, I know you guys are sick. You probably like, uh, uh, what, what's it called? Um, <laughs> what's that medication called? Uh, or that form of medication where you get it rect rectally. <laughs> An enema, is that what it is? <laughs> anyways i'm gonna get off that but yeah it's it's funny that the this idea of health being something that you can only claim through lifestyle through long 
dedication through consistency has all has been almost everything like it's nothing but, but put aside like you know like that clip i played like uh, last week where <laughs> the general secretary of biden's administration was asked if uh, <laughs> a healthy lifestyle is something they stand behind and she's like well we just rely on public health and they haven't said anything about that so we're not going to get behind it <laughs> like are you serious oh man like it, it's pretty it's pretty crazy right it, that's pretty crazy and i guess some of the um frustration in my voice i feel like last week might have been perceived as me being like really angry or unhappy i mean i feel like i am those things in some ways but in an appropriate manner right like what is going on around around us is totally cra crazy and um what's the word like there's no unprecedented yeah it's I feel like it's unprecedented, at least in my lifetime. Maybe it's like, I'm sure everything's cyclical and it's happened before, blah, 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 but not while I was alive. So for me, it's all unprecedented. And I'm having a, a reaction to what's going on by kind of <laughs> feeling exasperated, a little bit desperate, where like obvious uh, basic things about health that like our common sense, I thought, are being completely disregarded. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, I think I'm not alone in that. It's, I mean, clearly with this trucker convoy protest happening, it seems like a lot of people are behind it. it seems like, uh, you know, the 50,000 truckers are definitely <laughs> uh, behind that sentiment. Uh, all the people donating to them. Did you guys hear about this? On GoFundMe, they had like 9 or $10 million donated to that to that cause like what other cause in such a short amount of time could amass that amount of money in this country nothing that's the answer nothing else because no no one's that passionate about anything right now except for the fact that we're unhappy with how things have gone for the last two years and we need change but of course uh that's just maybe that's just what I'm seeing because apparently there's a lot of people who uh who are anti-protest. Have you guys seen this? There's a hashtag against the protest where they're trying to again like uh just use ad hominem, hominem what is that word? Ad hominem hom hominems <laughs> ad hominem hominem ad hominem what is it? Attacking the person just by calling them names. Yeah, they're just, they're just calling names by, uh, they got the hashtag flu trucks clan. They're trying to make the truckers seem like they're white supremacists. They're all white supremacists. This is the flu trucks clan. Uh, like, and these just, these awful, awful, this awful government and all these people in charge are doing nothing but divide people up and make each other, like, hate each other or make it seem like everyone hates each other. Meanwhile, you, like, you look at um, people's like recordings of what's going on at these uh, protests. It seems like it's all love and happiness and celebration and being like proper, like polite Canadians who've just had enough. Meanwhile, you have, um, uh, this was uh, on February 1st, Trudeau tweeted this. He goes, Today in the House, members of Parliament unanimously condemned the anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, anti-black racism. I don't know why you have to say anti-black racism. Racism doesn't just cover it. Like it has, it's just, just particularly anti-black. It's not towards the other ones. Like, I mean, you already said anti-Semitism and, and Islamophobia. You just... Homophobia, of course, it's not over until you include the homophobia and, and then the new one, transphobia. All of that that we've seen displayed on, 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 in Ottawa over the past number of days. Finally, this is like the first time addressing, maybe not the first time actually, but addressing like the protests like in, in this manner. And then he goes on to say, together, let's keep working to make Canada more inclusive. Yeah, like, what are you talking about, man? What, like, you're clearly not being inclusive. Clearly, you're just dividing people up and you're 
pitting vaccinated versus unvaccinated people. And then you're making one group seem like they're just like haters to hate, uh, Jews to hate, like uh, is, uh, Muslim people. Like who hates both Jews and Muslim people? And then specifically anti-racist, homophobe, trans, like no, like there's no group that exists like that. <laughs> you're just like name calling, like this is t terrible, like it's not even like creative name calling. It's just you're, you're continuing with divisive rhetoric rather than being a real leader and addressing the protests head on. Just a coward, Trudeau. Mr. Trudeau, you're a coward. <laughs> oh, man. And then, like, all these news, news about, like, um, artists dropping their music on, on, on Spotify and blah, blah, blah. Like, I, was, I keep checking on Spotify. I can still listen to Neil Young's music. Like, keep on rocking in the free world. It's still available. <laughs> Can't believe that's one of his songs. One of his songs is keep on rocking in the free world. And then he's like, well, if I'm in this platform and you're on it, you can't be on it because I don't want you to keep on rocking in the free world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anyways, let's talk a little bit about Bitcoin because, oh, yeah, I, I wanted to talk about this before. Before we talk about like uh, Bitcoin, I just want to talk about the... Um, convoy one more time and about how all this money nine to ten million dollars was sent to GoFundMe to support the truckers right like clearly they have unbelievable support and then of course GoFundMe at first there was like the, the, this um, news article that said GoFundMe has um, frozen the account they're not going to get the money and then I think what that ended up being is like the way it was framed, it was like, this is uh, like not what normally happens, right? Um, as in like, oh, the, the money's frozen, so the truckers aren't going to get the money. The money's always frozen anyway, because they don't just give the money right away. They always have to have some sort of proposal and outline of how the money's going to be spent before it's released to the fund, right? So that was just normal, but it was presented it in a way it was fake news even though it was true like they were trying to make it seem like all oh, this money's going to be held up and really it's, it's being held up until they get the outline of how things are going to be spent and then like that was never going to be in question and then they had their outline and money was some money was apparently was released but then later on as the i guess it must have been trudeau government putting pressure on gofundme whoever whatever now they've simply deleted that from uh, their website so you can't any longer uh, donate through GoFundMe which is unbelievable like I think they've given the per people who donated the opportunity to get their refund so I highly recommend if anyone donated through GoFundMe get your refund back and instead of doing it through GoFundMe you should buy some Bitcoin and um, donate your Bitcoin to the cause there's a huge uh, account oh, if I could find it uh, that you should look up that that is accepting That is accepting donations to support the truckers. I'd recommend do that. And this this is this brings up the value proposition of Bitcoin because it is censorship resistant money, right? Like you, no one can tell anyone else whether you can participate in it or not. Like you, it's it's open source. It's anyone can can join. Anyone can use it. No one. There's no intermediary that stops anything from happening. It's it's amazing. Let me see if I can find this account. Let's see, on Twitter, you have, let's see, if I go to at NVK, I think he's probably got a link. Let's see. Mm, sorry, this is not very interesting, but you know what? Who would have it? BTC Sessions. That's who, who has it. BTC Sessions. Yeah, go to at BTC Sessions and then go to his. Yeah, go to his uh, tweets and you'll see a link to uh, TallyCoin. 
Hong Kong HODL is on TallyCoin crowdfunding for, um, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Bum, blah, 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 blah. Here it is. Bitcoin for truckers. It's just amazing. They've got, they started off with like a low number that they were going to raise and then they just completely blew their goals out of the water. So they've, at this point, they've got 2.3 Bitcoin raised and they're aiming for five. It's amazing. So you can either do an on-chain or lightning payment to support them. And ever since it was like said that the uh, trucker's money from GoFundMe was frozen or that it was deleted from their website, this number's been rising like very fast. So that's awesome to see. But yeah, go to BTC Sessions on Twitter and he's got a link there to support if if you, if that's what you want to do. Yeah, there you go. That's what like the value proposition of Bitcoin on display as we speak, right? Like there's a central point of failure when you have like this trusted third party that has to hold the funds for the organization you want to support. Why can't you just give directly? Well, it's just the way the money works, you know. We always need a third party. No, you don't. No, you don't. You can just give money directly through this instrument, through Bitcoin. And no one can stop that from happening. And that that's powerful. And that's why Bitcoin is like the most um, positively asymmetric risk to reward bet that is available on the market. So I'm going to go through like this uh, tweet thread that this guy, James Lavish, has and this is what he says he's going to use round numbers to simplify but he goes first let's determine the downside risk of bitcoin using the recent high of 70k it was 69 actually but round numbers and a drastic drawdown level of 80 percent which bitcoin has done in the last three times before if we do 80 percent minus 70 thousand then we get um Basically, 80% would be 56,000. So 70 minus 56,000 is 14,000. So potentially, we could go down as low as $14,000. I mean, some people say the downside risk is zero, but let's like, just for the sake of like this example, I think 80% drawdown is a pretty good um, estimate given that it's only happened three times before. Right, so this would be the fourth time, let's say, down from 70 to all the way down to 14,000. So that's the downside risk. So if we, the current price is uh, 38,000. And so this actually, the current price is around 41, 42,000 because it just recently had like a crazy pump in price. But let's just go with the number he's tweeted with. The current price was 38,000 at that time. So if we look at the risk itself, the risk is, he uses the formula, the risk is the current price minus the downside price. So the current price is 38,000, the downside price is, price is 14,000, so the risk is 24. 38 minus 14 is 24,000. Now let's determine the upside or the reward side. So with Bitcoin, we have the initial level, the investment use case, and a much higher optionality level, which would be the money use case. Like for the investment use case, if you've been following this James Lavish guy, then you know that his investment use case is $1 million. And this is something I went over in like a previous episode where he, um, he basically explains how like the currently all global assets combined together. If you, if you like by the best estimates, if you combine everything together, we have a total amount of about $700 trillion of global investment assets. And if you just do a simple, and the total like market cap of Bitcoin is less than a trillion. It's about like 900 billion right now, maybe a bit less. So if you just think about the fact that, you know, bonds are negative yielding, a lot of stocks for companies are gonna, like our companies are dying due to the response to the pandemic. They're not gonna survive gold, whatever, money, uh, the cash uh, cash and savings, like uh, all that kind of deflating away, all these things losing value. There's going to be a shifting of value from, uh, from those assets into Bitcoin. And if only 3% of the 
of that $700 trillion, um, three, if only 3% is reallocated towards Bitcoin, the total price of Bitcoin would, would go to $1 million per, per Bitcoin. <laughs> so that's his uh, um, estimate for the investment use case for Bitcoin. And then, so then if you use the upside price of 1 million and you subtract 38,000, which is the current, current price, then the reward equals 962,000. So then the initial risk to reward is 24,000 of risk, 960,000 of reward. <laughs> So using the current Bitcoin price of 38,000, the risk is 24 over 38, which is 0.63 or 60%. And the reward is 962 over, over 38K, which is uh, 25 or 2,500%. <laughs> so then you have about a 60% downside risk versus 2,500% upside risk. Said in another way, that's basically a 42, X higher reward than risk. So 42 risk to reward ratio. And then the last way he puts it is for every dollar you have at risk, you have a potential reward of $42. This is seen as a highly positive asymmetric opportunity. But what makes Bitcoin absolutely compelling is the optionality that includes on the upside. When buying Bitcoin, you're also buying an embedded call on the use case for Bitcoin as money. But so then, hmm. then he goes on to say, if Bitcoin ultimately becomes the replacement for fiat currencies, then as fiats go lower and lower, Bitcoin will go higher. And then the upside becomes many multiples of the investment use case. So yeah, I don't know, think about that. And then as a response to his thread, I just wrote, wrote, and bonds are the most negatively asymmetric risk to reward bet, bet. And then the guy actually responded to my tweet with a bullseye emoji. So there you go. Take that for words, what, what it's worth. All right, I'm, I'm near 30 minutes. I'm pretty much done ranting. Thank you for listening. I want everyone to know that I'm, I'm not unhappy. I'm not um, angry or upset or... Well, I'm, I am upset, but at the same time, like I didn't finish that thought, actually, maybe I'll finish with this. While I'm upset at what's going on, like politically with like, you know, like these, the response to the pandemic, at the same time, I'm also like have like the best life with and the happiest life and some so many other, with so many other regards, like with my family, like I have a two month old daughter who's just like, I'm completely head over heels with, I'm so in love with her. I just like love her and stare at her in the eyes for hours on end during the day and like do funny sounds with her. Like I'm like, like I said, in love with that little girl. I have my little boy who's like tricking me and keeping me on my toes and keeping me happy who I wrestle with like all day long. I'm super happy with that. I got like certain friends who I'm like closer with than ever, of course, because that's kind of what happens when you're in these difficult situations. Like I'm doing uh, all these things like doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and like I find so much I derive so much reward from doing that. Uh, every once in a while, I, I, I've been going hunting in the wintertime with friends. That's been awesome. Like doing this whole YouTube thing, the podcasts, everything. Like all this stuff that I'm doing is, I find a lot of, derive, I derive a lot of satisfaction in doing all those things. And I am ultimately have a great life and I'm happy. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's just this can't continue right like we can't continue complying to these ridiculous rules because ultimately it's going to lead to a place that we're not going to be happy with we're not going <laughs> to we're not going to want to be there anymore like everyone has a different line i guess but like we're going to get there if there, if people don't stand up and say no you have to you simply have to um let's see what was the last thing i wanted to talk about this thing yeah this is the last thing I want to do. Just there's this great little um, interview with Jordan Peterson where he basically says, like, what is the lesson you learn from Nazis? Let's see if we can hear this. What was the lesson? 
That's the question. What was the lesson? And the lesson is, you're the Nazi. That's the lesson. It's like, really? Really? Oh, God, that's a terrible lesson. But I don't see another lesson. It's you. Well, no one wants to learn that. I mean, that's what I've been teaching my students since 1993. It's like, if you were there, that would have been you. You think, well, I'd be Oscar Schindler. I'd be rescuing the Jews. It's like, no, I'm afraid not. Yeah, you'd at least not be saying anything. And you might also be actively participating. You might also enjoy it. You never know. Yeah, I mean... I, that's that's what I think of sometimes. Like, if what what would I do if I was Mr. Trudeau? Would I be doing the same thing? <laughs> I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> but I know that's within me to have the capacity to be a tyrannical leader. So you have to keep that in check with the knowledge that it's possible. I feel like Mr. Trudeau is not really doing that, is he? But there's hope. These truckers, they're amazing. They're keeping us people with, you know, our, our, the fringe minority with the unacceptable views saying they're keeping us, giving us hope. And with the Bitcoin the donations that they're getting, they're getting censorship funding, censorship resistant funding. And I hope this goes somewhere. It might lead to nothing, but at least, at least uh, it's helping wake up some people. And I, th I think I've seen some changes like in Quebec, they're not gonna tax the unvaxxed anymore, which is good. I think uh, some of the prairie provinces, Saskatchewan, Alberta, they've also been uh, changing their tune. So hopefully uh, Ontario and our Dougie, Mr. Ford, can uh, change his mind on, on these vaccine passports and mandates as well, and we can move on with our lives. All right, that's it for everybody. Thank you for listening. Love you all. Uh, stay active, be thankful or grateful. Jay Mart out.